think it's important for people to know who Trestle was because probably because a lot of people didn't know who he was for so many years. There was, you know, one, there was this book, you know, that went around, which is still very popular, still sells regularly today. Um, has been selling regularly since it came out, 1914, which, you know, we're 99 years away from it now. The author himself is an interesting character. To find out how much of the reality of his life was like the book, um, you know, what his, his real evidence was for that, you know, he based the book on the evidence of the experience working in Hastings and probably other places as well. Well, Robert Tressel is a very significant character in the history of the Labour movement nationally, and obviously an important part of the Labour movement in Hastings. Tressel was a house painter, so he was an artisan worker and worked in Hastings in the periods just running up to the First World War, 1906, 1910, that sort of period. But what was most significant about him was he wasn't just a, a, a worker, a painter. Uh, he got involved in the Social Democratic Federation, which is one of the organisations which was the forerunner to the Labour Party. And of course he wrote a book. He wrote the book, The Ragged Trouser Philanthropists. The ragged trousered philanthropist means that philanthropy is not only by those who have money to give it away. That he, what he meant was it was a sort of send up, if you like, a spoof almost in the title that he was saying these philanthropists, it was the working men giving their labour for free almost. They were, they were the ones who supported society. They were the philanthropists because they got nothing out of it. That they were keeping society going. They were the real philanthropists and yet they had ragged trousers. They had literally holes in their trousers. They had boots that could barely cover their feet, you know, to keep them warm. He wrote the book The Ragged Trouser Philanthropists which is a book about his experiences with his workmates as a painter in the building industry in Hastings. And his workmates uh, suffered in terms of the nature of the job. They suffered because of the nature of the incomes they got and the poverty. Uh, one, uh, one chap, Jack Linden, is sacked and then dies. There's the young apprentice who's just a dog's body on the job. And he, he compares that to the wealth and the affluence of the employers and the rich people in the town. The publication of the book was just around the end of the First World War, but it became a really significant book, particularly to building workers who could understand and identify with the characters and with the experiences in the book. But it became a really important book for the labour movement nationally, because in his writings, apparently about everyday life at work, his socialist views, his views about how you could have a better society, how things could improve, how ordinary people could take charge of their lives, all that comes through in the book. And so it's a, a very inspiring book, I think. Here we are outside Hastings Reference Library, which is very important in terms of Tressel's relationship um, to the, the novel The Ragged Trouser of Francis and the town, because there's a very important chapter in the book um, on the the Moorish Room and on the cave, um, where he talks about designing the Moorish Room and how Tressel is, um, Owen rather, the main character of the book, is exhilarated because he has to research and plan this room and what, how much different it is from his normal method of work. And we do know that Noonan consulted journals that were in the Free Library, as it was called at the time, the Barassi Institute. And this is exactly the same building that's become the public library from a private reading library as it was in those days. Here we are outside Hastings Town Hall, another very poignant um, memorial, if you like, to Trestle within the town. This is the very same town hall that was around in Trestle's day. Um, the actual building is unusual, in the, in the set it's been kept the same. But also, apart from that, this was the, where the election results were held and a very important chapter in the book, The Wise Men of the East, where he talks about a by-election is called in the town. And we do know that there was a by-election while Noonan was living in the town um, in 1908. There was actually a by-election where the city member retired, uh, retired and uh, a by-election was called. Uh, Noonan actually uses the phrase, um, he, he retired because he was given permission to own even more of the country that he owned so much of anyway, and he, a by-election is held in, in that place. And we do know this was the election results were held and they were declared on the, outside that window on that balcony there. Um, and he talks about Sir Grabald Enclosed Land, as he calls it in the book. 
Uh, in real life, the name would go as Harvey Ducrow MP, and he talks about Sir Gravin de Close and the crowds and throngs would be in the street and the fights and the distribution of socialist literature. And this was taken from real evidence at the time of the elections of 1906, when there was a liberal landslide election in the country, and the by-election of 1908, all happened while Trestle was living in the town. So it's just another reminder of the book and its relationship to reality and to Edwardian politics and local history of the period. You know, millions of people would have read it and perceived society in that way. One could argue it's even entrenched people's views of a society, that the working man isn't interested in a change in society. There is a tremendous um, problem with that sort of change, wanting to change society. It's probably, I think it's probably helped give people ammunition for what, how terrible perhaps things were in, in Edwardian period, the time before the First World War, that the living conditions were appalling before the welfare state. So it's certainly um, made that difference. Some people have said it's had a tremendous effect. It was cited actually by some authors as saying it helped Labour win the 1945 general election. Well, he didn't have a Labour Party in, in Robert Trestle's day in Hastings of any note, of any size. And he was involved in socialist politics in, in, in Hastings. So the Labour Party, which now has the majority on the council, which has had an MP up until recently, if he came back now, if he was around now, there'd be a much more active and uh, movement, a much stronger Labour movement. He would have changed a lot of people's views or, you know, helped entrench their views that society should be changed, they should have welfare reform, there should be pensions, things like that. Some of the basics we perhaps accept today that our early socialists um, uh, and early Labour Party members etc fought for to change the early social reforms in this country. The first Labour government in, Brit in Britain was in 1923, didn't have a majority and only lasted for not much longer than a year. There was then a Labour government in 1929 to 1931, again not with an overall majority. And the first majority Labour government was in 1945. And of course the 1945 Labour government was one all Labour Party members look back to, because it was the 1945 Labour government that brought in the National Health Service, education, welfare, nationalised a number of industries, and really created the basis, I believe, of a modern civilised Britain. I think the Ragged Trails Philanthropist is selling copies still today, 99 years after it was published, and will probably continue selling copies um, for some years to come because people can relate to the experience of uh, Frank Owen, who was the main character in the book, who we know was based on Trestle's life himself, um, because the actual interplay, if you like, of the social interaction of the book, the way the workers and bosses relate to each other, the way the working men banter with each other, um, the overall changes in society aren't that much different. Still we live in a capitalist society, still workers compete amongst themselves, still um, you know, low wage rates can be apparent to all of us no matter what professions we are. Here we are outside 115 Millward Road, um, the address where we know Trestle, Stroke, Noonan lived for a number of years and where we believe a lot of the book was, if not actually written up, certainly the notes for it were taken, a lot of the evidence written while he was uh, working for some firms in the area and living at this address. Um, so this is where much of the domestic reality went on. You see there's a plaque there that has been put there by Hastings um, Sussex Trade Unionists when they just rediscovered, if you like, Trestle and where he came from. Um, and this is where a lot of the domestic sort of issues, if you like, of the book uh, are portrayed through the home life of uh, Trestle, Stroke, Noonan. So very much the reality of Noonan's life here um, for a few years, living in that flat up there, penning away his book. He talks about writing after work. So there's this chap working a 56, 60 hour week, hard manual work, coming home, his chest, we know he had a weak chest, and in fact he dies later on uh, of chest um, related diseases. And he talks about coming up the flat, Franco, breathless and going right to the top after a hard day's work and the cold and looking out over the town of Hastings and thinking about how 
his life is going to come to the end. When he talks about, he coughs up blood at one stage and the book's called, the chapter is called The Beginning of the End. And he looks out over town thinking how his life's probably going to end. And, you know, thinking about the chimes of the clock in the distance and the cold night at Hastings and looking out over Mugsmore as it was there. I think he was, Robert Trestle was trying to drag the working class out of their apathy. He was trying to write a book that was entertaining, but he hoped also primarily to convert people to socialism because he kept his experience, the detail in the book shows you his struggles with the working man. He, had, he, he couldn't believe their apathy, as he called them, the ragged trails of philanthropists, that they were supporting the system. They were happy to go along with this. They were happy to fight amongst each other rather than change the system. And his book was about changing the system to a socialist society.